Okay, let's talk about fear, anger, guilt, and shame. First of all, I would like to say that both fear, anger, guilt, and shame, all of them, they have a healthy component. And that is the healthy fear, the healthy anger, the healthy guilt, and the healthy shame. And I would like to talk about that first, because that is what we need as a child when we're about three, um, and we start to create our persona, it's between three and seven, where we have that sensation of worthiness uh, that's coming in there. That's when we start to realize that there is a me here and there is a you there. That's why you can, <laughs> can have children sitting in the sandbox. Um, if they're younger, like if they're one or two uh, years old, if one child starts to cry, everybody starts to cry because they can't differentiate between my sensation and your sensation. I feel sad because you cry, I am sad. Um, when they when when we turn three, that is when we you know start to realize that there's a me here and there's a you there. I can hit you in the head with a shovel, and in the sandbox, and you start to cry, and I don't cry. Hmm. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see if we can explore that. And that's where we that's where we start to have you know those um, terrible terrible threes and terrible twos. Uh, where the children are starting to explore the boundaries is because they they are now realizing that there is someone here and there's someone there. The part of the brain is starting to do that. Um, and that is when we need to be taught the healthy boundaries. We need to be taught about a healthy sense of self. We need to be taught about self-care. Uh, we need to be taught about self-worth, self-love. Um, and that is also where, where we... Um, create a, we create a being in the world where we're safe and if that is you then everything i talked about in the first two fetters super super easy no identifying sorted done if that is not you <laughs> if you're like the rest of us uh, and you have like um topics where emotions come up like fear and guilt and shame then you need to look at it but I just want to take a, a moment to talk about the healthy component of it. So the healthy fear is about keeping us safe. It's about not going into a white unmarked van. It's about having that um, gut feeling when somebody says, yeah, that's great, you should do that. And you just can feel a body, no, <laughs> most definitely should not. Um, that that um, very, very clear body, yes, body, no, we're talking more about that in the ninth fetter, but I would like to start to introduce, I have talked about it a bit, and I'm introducing you more to it now, when we talk about the healthy um, fear and giggle and shame. Because the healthy fear is when you have a very, very clear body, no, I don't want to do that. It doesn't feel safe, it doesn't feel right, I'm not going to do that. And then you don't do it. That's the healthy fear. The healthy anger is about creating strong boundaries. Um, if you look at if you look at a map, you know, of the world, you can see all the countries have very, very clear boundaries to where it is. And that very, very clear boundary makes it so that you are not just, you know, building a house and another boundary that is not part of yours. The same level of boundary is what you need in you. So when somebody's asking you, Oh, could you drive me seven hours? Uh, <laughs> to pick up a puppy and you have like no I'm not doing that I'm not doing that and then they get angry about it if you can be bullied by anger into some into doing something then your boundaries are being changed your your boundaries is being disrespected you have said no it's not being respected and therefore the boundaries are slowly slowly moving I'm talking more about that in the six. Somebody's asking you, would you drive me seven hours to pick up a puppy? And you go like, no, I really don't want to do that. They get angry. The healthy anger, anger that you then feel is like, hang on, I'm allowed to say no. I'm allowed to say I don't want to drive you. I don't want to drive you. There's no point in you yelling at me. You yelling at me is not making me drive you anywhere. That's the healthy anger. So the healthy anger is not rage. That is unhealthy. The healthy anger is not raising your voice. That is unhealthy. The healthy anger is just being completely and utterly clear that, nope, not doing this. About boundaries, nope, not doing this. 
That's the healthy anger. The healthy guilt is what is keeping us ethically. So whenever we feel guilty about something, it's when we, we are on a path and we know what is the right thing to do and we don't do that, then we feel, feel guilty. Normally, you know, if you say something that's a lie, then you feel guilty about it. So the healthy guilt is what is keeping you in alignment with, with your values. It keeps you in alignment with, with how you want to be in the world. And that is when you have healthy guilt. So when you get that sensation, ooh, that was nice, ooh, I didn't like that. I, they were talking behind um, Janice back, I didn't like that feeling at all. Then you have that feeling of guilt for not speaking up. That's healthy guilt. That's you realizing that, ooh, that is not in line with me. I do not like when people are talking behind someone else's back. I don't like that. That's not for me. I don't like that. That's healthy guilt. Healthy shame is when you're reminded about that you're human. You're not God. You're not supposed to be perfect. You're not supposed to, to, um, to be in any certain way. You're just human. So that's the healthy shame. That's when we have, um, let's say you stumble down some stairs and you feel shameful when you're landing. If you feel shameful about stumbling down, down some stairs, then there's something about shame you need to look at. Um, it's a great reminder. Healthy shame is a great reminder in so many ways. Having that healthy um, navigation back to, oh, I thought I got a bit, you know, uh, pompous. I got a bit arrogant. I got a bit, you know, just reminding yourself that, hang on, hang on. You are just like everyone else. There's no difference. There's no difference. Why would you be unique? Why would you be something special? To be reminded that you're not. You're just like the rest of us. You know, that's the healthy shame. So the healthy fight, flight, freeze, when that is happening, is what is giving us strong boundaries, is what is giving us a clear sense of self, a clear um, ability for self-care. I'm talking about that in the third fetter. Uh, a clear, healthy ability for self-care, um, a very clear self-worth, and a very clear self-love. And I know that there is no self, but we are talking about when we're children, when it's very, very important that we have these senses. We need to have that sen sense of self in order for us to now let go of it and just be with what is. So I have made this overview just to make it easy to look at. And you have the feeling out to the left. You can see fear, anger, guilt and shame is there. You have the healthy response. Fear is when you're choosing healthy relationships and situations. Anger is when you're protecting and creating clear boundaries. Guilt is reminding us that we're in a direction that is not in line with our ethics. And shame is teaching us humility and keeping us grounded. If you haven't had a skillful upbringing and you haven't had, and you let's say you have had dysfunctional parents and you have had a life where, where you weren't, they were not able to feel the healthy fear and guilt and shame in them, then they pr clearly could not give that to you. You can't pour from an empty jug. So if you haven't got healthy boundaries and healthy self-worth and healthy self-love, you cannot teach your children. If you have a conditioned reaction, that is where you have um, an immature interpretation of, any, of an experience, which is exactly that you are overreacting to what is happening um, or you have a toxic starting point. I want to thank everyone that are showing your appreciation of the Awakening curriculum by buying me a cup of tea and becoming members of the YouTube channel. I truly appreciate that gesture. It means so much to me and it also makes it possible to keep the channel and the homepage free from paid promotion and all that stuff. So thank you so much. And if you're new to the channel, then you find the full Awakening curriculum either on the YouTube channel or on my homepage, themore.uk. The Awakening Curriculum is a free resource for you to use the feather work in resolving the effects of trauma and integrating insights of non-self and non-duality into your daily life and become awake.